Today we're going to talk about PR and media and how its influence has become unrecognisable from 20 years ago. Donna, today we have a champion guru on our hands, uh, PR and marketing guru um, Phil Hall, who's chairman of the PHA Group. So we're absolutely delighted to have Phil with us today. You're very welcome, Phil, and thank you for good joining to see you. us. So good of you to come and have a conversation today. Well, speaking of crisis though and damage limitation, I mean, what reputation issues or sort of crisis do you sort of see in your in your line of business? We often see a very small crisis. Mm. Um, develop into something very big because people say the wrong things. So, mm. so they, they first they pour fuel on the fire by making it worse, but then it gets picked up on social media. Mm. And social media is not like newspapers. Although people may take make fun at newspapers and say they're not always accurate. Don't believe what you read in the press, mm. as people used to yeah, say. But yeah. actually on the internet, there's no editing. There's no checking of facts. And a, and a reputation can get destroyed in minutes. So in our view, the first few hours of a crisis are very important. You have to take control of the narrative and make sure that you are leading the narrative rather than others. That you've got proper relationships with the journalists so that you can discuss the issues very often off record just to explain to them what's happening and, and, and the yeah. real story that, uh, that, that sometimes only we know. And just making sure that everybody is understanding what the truth is because it's very hard in, in this uh, sort of uh, internet world to put the genie back on the bottle. Once it's out, it's all over it. the internet. You once can't stop online, it. Once it's online, like if once the negative is online, how do you, like, how do you, so people are going to just see that then. It's the first thing they're going to read, isn't it? That's why it's so important that you get in very quickly and people sit back and bury their heads in the sand. It's not always good to comment. Sometimes, you know, you want to get all the facts first. And, you know, there could be, I'm trying to think of an issue. Maybe there's a, you know, you, you were talking about being a fashion boutique. Maybe you're in a shopping center and there's a, a fatal accident in that, uh, in that shopping center. I had dealt with a, a situation just like that. You've got to be very careful about saying things until you know the full facts. And you've got to be respectful of the family, but you can brief the media so that they start to understand that it's not maybe what eyewitnesses are saying. I remember one of my first experiences on a local newspaper when I was a young lad was I saw a, a fatal accident and I went to the police station afterwards and I reported what I saw and I said, did you have any witnesses? And the police officer said, yes, we had 10 witnesses. And I said, that's great. He said, but you all saw something different. And that's the Everybody's problem. Perception. That's the problem. It's perception and yes. people in the media take a perception and it can get expanded very, very quickly and people can lose control of not only of the crisis, but also of their own personal brand. And do you feel sometimes that some people jump on the bandwagon to promote themselves by commenting on the different aspects of things? They do. And I think that's what that, that is a real problem. So you get people who are ill-informed, barely know the subject and they jump on the bandwagon and particularly if they have a high profile it gets picked up across mm -hmm. social media and suddenly something that is completely false becomes a, a truth to anybody reading social media so you've got to be a, you've got to be very sort of uh, fleet of foot and move quickly so it, when you're doing crisis management when is it good to comment and when is it not good to comment where do you draw the line i think it's good to comment when you know the full facts okay particularly good to comment if you're not guilty of the, the issue they're accusing you of mm. um and i think it, not not to comment when you when you're not sure because you cannot make a comment and then afterwards say oh I'm sorry I got that wrong you've got to be very very careful but just to interrupt you about commenting sorry so when you if you're commenting on something how do you know these days that you're not commenting on fake news well, you've got to make sure that the, the great thing about our clients is uh, I certainly think when they're involved in a crisis is they are the center of the issue and they know the facts because they know their staff they know the you know the circumstances and they know what procedures they've got in place the press don't so the press would jump in and say this is a terrible mistake by somebody and often you know actually it's not a mistake you know the circ obviously we can't talk about specific specific mm. circumstances but you've got you know as, as the client and the person at the center of it you know more about the the story than anybody else does and we always say to them just remember you know the facts the journalists don't they're trying to find out the facts and one one of the things I think is when, when journalists come on and they've they're so keen to tell you they've got the facts mm. so if they know that you've been involved in a scandal they will come on and say this is a scandal you know this financial institution has duped its customers uh, 20 million, 23.5 million pounds is missing. They will be very precise. When they come on and say, oh, we understand that there's a crisis at this financial institution, you know they haven't got the facts. Okay. Because they can't help themselves telling you they're, they're proud of having got the facts. And then you're in a different position. Mm. You've got to be very careful about how you comment then. And in this world of print media, which is really under pressure now because of the online 
everything is available, everything is, we've just become so accustomed to just getting up in the morning, putting on your phone, getting everything done. The advertising side of things must be really struggling. They are, it's changed, I mean, it's changed, it's different. Does it work? Uh, well, it doesn't, the traditional advertising still works for the big, big brands. But what happens now is smaller brands and, and, and challenger brands have found ways of advertising through different, different methods. So what we've seen a, a massive change in the last 10 years is the growth of the influencer. And an influencer can be working from their kitchen table with 20, 25,000 followers. But if they've got 25,000 followers, they all believe in what their, their influencer is talking about. Talk about your fashion uh, business, for instance. If that influencer talks about fashion, their market tends to be very small. Newspapers sell, well, worth selling in my day, five million copies. They now sell one and a half million copies. But it's a very broad church. You, you, you've got 60 year olds, you've got 40 year olds, you've got 20 year olds, you've got 15 year olds, all reading that newspaper. So you can't write one newspaper for just one age group. Mm -hmm. If an influencer attacks one age group and one group who are influenced or interested in a particular subject. So advertisers now know that if they go to that influence and advertise on that website, they're hitting 20,000 people who are all interested in their product. It's much more, you get much more bang for the buck. So nearly we're going to the stage where as teenagers, we all followed like sheep, the style, the fashions, what was being said, what was correct to be like. Now that is leaking into other age groups that That's they true. are being led by what they consider is perfection yeah. and their aim of perfection. And when you see um, what you would consider intelligent, educated people in their 40s, and I have to say women being one of the biggest offenders following an influencer, you think, gosh, you know, we fought so hard as women to have our own minds, our own votes and our own education and have a job and have our children. And yet we're being so easily led mm. by somebody else's opinion. It's really tough. Mm. I don't think I that's think. true. I think I don't think people follow one influencer. I think they follow a multitude of them. They still read newspapers, but in a you know not in the sort of numbers. It, it tends to be the older generation that read newspapers. As you say, young people now look at their telephones. But I come in on a train in the morning because I commute to work. And you know, everybody's on. Everybody's consuming phone, media. Yeah, yeah. The, the difficulty we're having and what we're, what, what we're facing a sort of a cliff edge is the best newspapers and the best journalism still comes from the newspapers, the traditional. Agreed. And it's been stolen. It's been stolen by the Googles and by websites. They take their stuff. But these newspapers are not going to survive if their circulations keep dropping. And eventually it will affect the quality and the independence yes. of the media coverage that we have. So something's got to be done to try and save newspapers. I, I, I agree. I totally agree. I think a good era, I think that, you know, I miss the days of good old advertising. Yeah. You can be our, like, our madman. Yes. From, like, you are a new well, John Hamm. You are a new John Hamm. It's interesting. Madman and John Hamm, you know, that was a reality in journalism when I first yeah. started. People used to drink a lot. Yeah. There was yes. an awful lot of socialising. And actually, you know, the world's poorer for it because that barroom conversations and talk and chatter. That's where and business and was that, done. That's where business was Fantastic. done. And also people formed opinions there now mm. people tend to live in silos they work from home mm. they're not as connected We've as they used to be social connection. Yeah. and on that madman note we have to leave it there phil hole chairman of pha media pure pure guru and expert thank you for coming in it's today a pleasure. thank you